and welcome back to Your Regina 120. I am Jeff Clint, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I have learned as a part of a uh, Bachelor of Computer Science at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be learning about another logical fallacy, the fallacy of exclusive premises. Uh, so how this is going to work, and this is going to be one of the easier lessons hopefully, uh, is the, the, the rule of what makes a logical uh, or what makes a, a logical argument valid is that it has to have at least one premise be a permanent. So, i.e., you cannot have both premises being negative. And so, what do we mean by negative premises? Let's just review that for a moment. So you have a negative premise if one of two things is, or if you're saying one of two kinds of things. Some x are not y, so for two things, say, you know, some people are not in this room, some uh, logical fallacies are not easy to understand, you get the picture. Or, alternatively, no x are y, or no you know, one thing or another thing, or no, nobody who or nobody who's in this room is, you know, a ginger. Say. Or n there is no uh, person in Thunder Bay uh, who is selling XRP. Uh, there's so again, you you can plug many many things into these two statements, and they will come in as negative. Uh, and so, what does it mean to have a, a logical argument that only uses negative premises? Maybe something like that. And remember, we're assuming that we even have three terms, which is usually the right kind of the right number of terms you need, a things that are qua quantified by some and are not. Uh, in this case, uh, so you can get something like this, where you've got something that looks like a, a valid argument. It's even got, you know, this some are not in there, so it's kind of deceiving. And yet, uh, the conclusion is not supported by the two premises, no matter if it turns out that the two premises are true and the conclusion is also true for some case. In general, this is going to mislead you. This is going to produce conclusions that are not supported by the premises. So what are some examples of this? Uh, well, we can get some really silly ones. Uh, so for example, Manitobans are Americans. No Americans are Canadians. Therefore, no Manitobans are Canadians. Makes sense, right? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. Manitoba is a province in Canada. People who live there, I hate Manitobans, are typically Canadians. Maybe there's some that are not, but uh, certainly not sort of. There are no Manitobans are. Like, there's at least one Canadian in Manitoba, pretty much at all times. Uh, you know, if you were to go to Manitoba and ask someone, hey, is anybody here a Canadian? You'll probably get something like, A, right? You know, it's, it's you, you would never even ask this kind of question, because it seems ridiculous. But the problem is, and this is often the case with these logical fallacies, is that you can make an argument that looks right, that looks convincing, especially con if it confirms things you already believe, and you'll kind of accept it, even though it's not necessary that it actually is true. So if we take the same form of argument and plug in instead of Manitobans, Canadians, and Americans, or Manitobans, Americans, and Canadians, 
Uh, no creation scientists are evolutionists, which is true. No evolutionists are convinced by evidence, which is false. Therefore, no one who is convinced by evidence is a creation scientist. Either way, so the, in fact, let's even replace this one, this evolutionist, in the example with creation scientists. Ah. So no creation scientist is an evolutionist, no, evo or no creation scientist is convinced by evidence, therefore no one who is convinced by evidence is a creation scientist. So this, if you think about it, uh, the, both the premises are, are true in this case, or, or, or you can accept it uh, as true without really much critical thought. And also the, the conclusion in this case uh, is also quite conceivably true. Uh, so you'd think that this might be something that you know you could argue, but the problem is is you are committing this fallacy. You're only arguing from negative premises. There is no positive premise that you're, you're, you're arguing from, so you're not using your evidence in a logically consistent way. And this is where the, the dangerousness of this kind of fallacy comes out, where you're, you're whether or not you know, these are all true or not, uh, if you tried to convince someone of this, they wouldn't accept this, and they would be right to not accept this, because it's a, the argument itself is not structured in such a way that you can make this conclusion. What are some other examples of this? Let's So, for example, some steel beams do not start on fire, true. Uh, jet fuel does not melt steel beams, therefore jet fuel does not start on fire. Again, we've, we've, we've gone wrong here somewhere, because under at least some uh, kind of pressure uh, conditions, you can obviously get jet fuel to at least a flash point or an ignition of some kind. It's going to oxidize. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if jet fuel. You know, you can light it with a match. I, I, I just don't know off the top of my head. I don't think you can. But uh, regardless, the argument is broken, and the argument is broken because, again, we, we are purely dealing with negative premises. Uh, let's see. Uh, quote: No planets are garbage cans. No garbage cans are gas giants. Therefore, no gas giants are planets. Again, it's it's true that no gas giants are planets, but it's not supportable by that argument. So uh, uh, we, we can kind of list over and over and over, example after example. The important thing to note is just that if you're going to make an argument and, and you're going to try to make it so that you're, you're convincing the other person of something, at least have one of your premises, no matter how many you have, be not negative, i.e. positive or affirmative. So, uh, it, as usual, if you'd like any more examples, uh, feel free to ask them in anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, and there should be a little Bitcoin address in the bottom so that you can support our whiteboard marker supply. So as you can see, it is starting to fade out a little bit. And uh, otherwise, hopefully you enjoy. See you next video.